Let's talk about loading materials into Creo models from Excel using tables as uh, inputs. Um, this is a pretty powerful feature. Um, and just to give you a, a reference here, I've got three material files in a subfolder. Um, this is the active uh, model, of course. And I've, and I've enabled this kind of uh, tree view of things so that we can kind of see what the PTC material name is. So if we come up here to this basket, you can see it has three material files associated with it. One's active or assigned and um, everything else in here does not have anything. So let's take a look at what the function requires. So look at the material, material load, and there is a table model material load option, which will take a table as an input. That table requires item name, which can be a wildcard, the material name, and then the uh, directory name. If, you're, if you have a search path, you don't need to necessarily put this in for your material files, but um, I'm gonna force that to kind of be there. So we're going to actually go create a table real quick. Item name, uh, material name, uh, dir name, and I'm just going to highlight those. Do Control T, say yes. My table has headers, and we'll give it a name. My table. And for the item name, let's do uh, front plate. Oops, F R O N T P R T, and let's load in. Um, brass, metal brass, and it is in the material files subfolder. So this is uh, this is basically the table of information that I'm going to modify for a particular model in uh, that's in session. And then we're just going to reference that by doing a TBL uh, my table is going to be our reference. So if I if I run this right now, um, you'll notice that it it's already completed. And if we come over here, and try to change this, you'll notice that it says the name is reserved. Well, that's because it, there might be a material file loaded there, but it's not active. Um, there's nothing assigned, so you can't necessarily change something that's not already at a starting point. So let's take a look at what's going on here. So if we come to the material, we'll see that in fact, we do have our brass loaded. I'm gonna assign that material. And then if we come back over here to um, the main assembly here, you'll notice that, yep, there it is, metal brass. Now. Let's go in and add in a few more uh, materials. So uh, let's change this to bronze. And let's also change this to, uh, or add in uh, copper too. Okay, so we'll run that. I'll just say regenerate for giggles. Okay, regenerate for giggles again. And that should be bringing that up as an option. Let me see what's going on here. So um, let's go make sure that it actually showed up. Change. Okay, so we do have our options there. I wonder if you have to close the tree and bring it back up. Nope, there they are. Okay, so for some reason I had to go to the model to get these changes to be uh, visible or I wasn't regenerating right or something. But nonetheless, you know, now we have something that we can go from metal to bronze or metal to copper. Um, which is uh, which is quite handy. So that's a basic overview of how that works. Um, if you wanted to, you could also just as a another uh, interesting thing, if we wanted to say plate .prt with a wildcard, uh, we could also come in and say, you know, I want to load uh, load that material. What did we load here? Metal bronze to everything that has plate in it. So if we take a look at this back plate, which we didn't have any materials before, come in and take a peek at it. And notice that that material has been loaded to that model also now. So it's just a basic overview of how that works. Um, quite handy. Uh, and if you tie it into Power Query or pull in data from other sources to kind of set these, um, it uh, you can do some pretty fancy logic and automation relative to loading material files.